Hello and welcome back to another Simply Gregster EV review. Today we are in beautiful Kissimmee, Florida, and we've been here for the last week or so. Uh, we've done the Disney trips, we've done the beach, but we have, as usual, a Model 3 rental. And to me, in my opinion anyways, this is the best rental car that you can get. This is a dual motor, long range, and in terms of performance and versus price, this is absolutely the best rental car that you can get on the lot. But there's a couple things that you need to know when renting an EV. Uh, as we've gone over in the previous video, we all know that the rental fleets are downsizing their EV fleets for various reasons. And I think this is a terrible mistake because this is literally the perfect car to have here. So in this video, we're just going to explain why it's such a good car to have on vacation. What's it like to charge? What's it like to deal with? And we'll just go through some of the quirks and great experiences that we have with EVs on our trip. So come along with us and uh, hopefully we can try to make a video of it. This car for eight days is around $300 Canadian, 400 horsepower, zero, zero to 60 in 4.4, 4.3 seconds. There's absolutely nothing that you can get on the lot in this for this price point that has that much performance but there are a few things that you need to know first of all on any car that you're renting not just an ev but this applies to all rentals always check the tires on it uh first thing you that you go for don't put your hand around it because you're probably going to injure yourself but just have a quick look if the tires are good these ones are actually brand new some sort of westlake tire i don't suggest buying them they're very loud um in terms of ev specificness you always have to make sure that the charge kit, that the mobile connector, if there's a, going to be a little tag, it's going to tell you mobile connector, storage bag, price if it's not in the car, and the J1772 adapter if it's not in the car. Again, just check it's there, make sure it's there, because if it's not there, they will charge you. Go and see someone if it's not there. Just make sure all the connectors and cables are there. Um, Again, pretty standard Tesla, long range, dual, dual motor. Nothing to really write home about here. We all know the Model 3s. Actually, the only issue we had on this car is this door panel keeps coming loose for some reason that I keep having to reattach. And first time I've seen this where the interior is actually peeling on it, but I think I've read about that before. Again, nothing crazy in ultra red. This is an absolutely beautiful color. This is probably one of the nicest spec rentals that we've had in quite a while. Maybe that Model Y long range in uh, Scotland was uh, also a very nice spec on it. But again, very standard Model 3. Again, about $30, $35 a day. Canadian, you really can't go wrong. Again, the reason why you want to rent one of these here, especially in areas such as Orlando, if you're doing the Disney trips, is that, well, one, you're really not all that driving all that much. And if you do bring it back under I believe 20% uh, state of charge. Well, they are, they're, they're, they're only charging you about $25, $30 to charge a car back up. So again, you don't have to waste time going to the gas station, fighting with American gas pumps with, for me, that's a huge deal and it's a big annoyance because they're always asking you to input your zip code and then you have to convert a postal code to a zip code. And it's just as horrible annoyance I find. right up there with being annoyed by the Harley Davidson that's extremely that's extremely loud so again we are inside we are going to navigate to a supercharger again if you are renting an EV and you don't have any EV experience Tesla will probably be your best bet at having a trouble-free experience I understand there might be a lot of people saying right now like oh why would you want to rent an EV you're wasting time uh, I don't really think so like I said, our hotel has charging. The supercharger network is great. There's nothing to really worry about that. We will show you the CCS network as well, how easy it is to use. Actually, I don't have any experience with the CCS network in the United States. Uh, what's also nice about this car is that, let's say you've spent the day at uh, Disney, you could activate the cabin cooling and um, HVAC system via the app on the phone which will connect with the car so as you're traveling back to your car you turn it on you get there your car is nice and air conditioned so we're going to go to a supercharger now we're at 22 percent state of charge just went down to 21 perfect that's what i wanted for this test 
We're going to go to a one that's probably a bit further away. Let's do this one here and it will list all the prices of kilowatt hour. Like I said, this is even cheap once converted in, into Canadian. Like it's, it's really, really cheap, even cheaper back home than uh, back home. So we're going to go to this one here. We'll go to this version three site. 7.5 miles away. We enter it and we shall see you there. So just in case anybody is wondering about luggage space, we have one big bag, one roller, two backpacks. There's still quite a bit of room in here if I would have packed it better. So no issues putting the luggage in, in the back of this. If you need more space, rent yourself a, a Model Y or an EV6 or an Ionic 5, something like that. But yeah, no luggage space here. And under here, there's quite a bit of space as well. So we could have actually put our backpacks in here and had more room for suitcases if we would have had them but no nope, we're all good now we're gonna go to the supercharger we're not gonna charge her for long but we will do a bit of a acceleration run what makes this car so good this is this is such a awesome car in general but as a rental car if you had to pay for something or if you wanted something that had this much performance it'd be in the premium section at four or five times the uh, price which is what makes it such an amazing deal to uh, get and it's just so comfortable to drive. It's so quiet to drive. Like I said, you can activate the app if, if you're at Disney or wherever, and then you can even do launches like this. It's just, it's just absolutely amazing that you could go to a rental lot, pay your $30, $40 a day, and get a car with this much performance that's not in the premium section or elite section. It's just absolutely brings a giant smile to my face. And it's just, it's just not Teslas. You could get, they, I, I saw they had Mach-E GT, they had regular Mach-E's, they had Kia EV6, they had Hyundai I Ionic 5, they had, you name it, it was there, it, it, it was great. I actually wanted to bring this car back halfway through and, and switch it out to get something else, but ah, eh, driving around here is not very much fun. So we're preconditioning to the supercharger now, and we'll just go do a charging test there and uh, see what's what, then we'll go hit up a, a CCS site. So we made it to the supercharger. This is a version three. You can actually tell by the cabinets that it's a version three. They're gonna be square and blocky and they don't have the hoods. Again, um, this is out of Wawa. Wawa and supercharging is actually really, really good. These are really cool gas stations, uh, really good charging stops, good amenities, all of that. So come, we're, we're, we're gonna plug it in. This is how easy it is. If you're unfamiliar with EVs, that's why I suggest getting a Tesla Model 3, Model, Model Y as a rental. It's literally, as easy as pumping gas to charge. Handle, click the button, unlocks the charge port, and that's it. The car will commence the charge, the contactors will, will close, and the charging will commence. But yeah, it's, it's that easy. As I said, this is such an awesome car to uh, drive. It's really, a, it's really absolutely amazing that you could rent such a good car for such little money on your holiday. I can't, I can't stop praising it. It's, it's just that good. So we're going to charge up here for a few minutes. Uh, I think we arrived 16% state of charge. So we'll, we'll charge up and we'll go find a CCS site. I have my adapter with me, but now we're, we're gonna get some snacks uh, while the charges for five or 10 minutes. We are charging away here, 233 kilowatts. We've already added three kilowatt hours. We arrived, we just hit 20% state of charge. We arrived at 16. It's saying 25 minutes. We'll charge up here for five, 10 minutes while we get some snacks inside. Then we'll go hit up a um, CCS site. I have my adapter with me. I brought my Tesla CCS to NACS adapter with me on the trip. Some car rental agencies do include this. Avis does include them in their cars, Hertz doesn't. So just keep that in mind. We plugged in 16% state of charge or about 50. We're going to unplug now. And it's really this easy. Stop the charge, press this, unplug, and that's it. That will close by itself. It's a bit hot out today. The cooling fans were going crazy. So now we're going to go find a CCS site, and that's where we'll use my CCS to NACS adapter that I did bring from home. Again, not all rental cars will have that. Uh, it's just something I brought along because I knew that we were going to be filming this just in case you did get a car that has CCS on it to show you what, what that process is. So we're going to head out now.
Orlando like or in this area the Elvira Orlando area it's absolutely horrible um, several factors one people drive way too fast in areas where they should be going a bit slower then people drive too slow where they should be going a bit faster then you have all the tourists and rental cars and a lot of them might not be from North America so there's that to factor in and then just general traffic everywhere it takes absolutely forever to get anywhere here so just have a lot of patience driving in the Orlando area. It could be very frustrating. I would say like 90% of people have no clue what's going on, even locals. They'll be on their phones at the traffic lights, leaving these huge gaps open, just no situational awareness. I know it's ironic I'm, I'm filming this from inside the car, but at least I'm paying attention to what's going on up ahead. Like I said, just so, so many factors. Driving here is something I absolutely dread. Uh, it's it's not very fun like I like this guy here is in the wrong lane now And he's trying to cut back over but the car in front doesn't know what to do because it's a rental car So it's just it's just all these factors. It's just arrived at the infamous electrify America So this is just a test if you have a CCS enabled car. So anything non non Tesla I have this is an OEM Tesla CCS to NACS adapter So we're gonna follow all the instructions on here. It says plug in first so we're going to pretend like this is not here, like that we're plugging in a CCS car, like this Bolt or that EQB. So we're going to plug this in first. We're going to plug that in. Make sure these are the Huber Sooner cables, actually. We're going to make sure that's properly done. Uh, we're going to initiate the charge here we'll try it with my american express it says authorizing please wait Pro processing payment is authorized initiating charge please remove card initiating charge this is where it could all go wrong with electrify america or electrify canada is that initiating charge phase. No, it clicked. I think we'll be good. We'll see. Welcome driver. We're not gonna press anything. Crosses our fingers here. Continue. Let's press continue and see what happens. We'll go to no receipt. It's actually starting. It's delivering some energy to the car. 112 kilowatts. So it worked. Electrify America worked. I was really expecting to come here and have a problem with, with initiating a charge using the, uh, the adapter, but no, everything's working. So that car, the EQB is plugged in. There's a lady in the Bolt is plugged in. I actually spoke of her. There's a, there's a Mach-E charging. No, everything is working here. We're, we've initiated the charge. So that just goes to show you that you could use a CCS enabled car on, on your road trip. So Ionic 5, Mach-E, Ionic 6, basically anything non-Tesla is going to be CCS enabled. And you could always tell by the connector here. I'll pull one out here. So this is the CCS connector, but no, we're all good here. We're charging, we're charging nicely. It's actually a bit more expensive than a supercharger. Supercharger was, I think, 28 cents a kilowatt hour. This is about 48, so it will be cheaper to charging a Tesla. And if you do plug in at a supercharger with your rental car, it will be just be billed to your rental account versus here you'll be paying with, with your credit card. So yeah, we'll charge up here. And there's one more site I want. So yeah, we're just gonna stop the charge here because we don't really need to charge much more than that. It was just to show you that Electrify America actually did work without any issues. So we'll stop the charge and that's it. We will unplug, we will unplug this first, put this back in. What's funny is people are always telling me that, oh, all you're doing is charging your car. Yes, I do like charging tests. I do like trying out different chargers, but realistically this car, we pick it up at 93, 
they will ask you at the uh, rental car um, company what percentage of charge it, it was at. So this car we picked up at 93%. And to be honest, we haven't been doing all that much charging. I charged it once at, at, at the hotel overnight, which the charger was six kilowatts there, so rather slow. And we got what we needed overnight and we went to Clearwater the other day. And on the way back, I, we stopped at a Wawa just to get some coffee and there was a supercharger there. So we just threw a charger on while, while we were drinking our coffee and, or, and getting it inside. But no, you're really not losing any time at all. The uh, range on this car, I believe is 438 kilometers. Actually, no, that's a standard range. I think this is over 500 kilometers. Again, about 400 horsepower, 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. So you could actually go quite a long distance in this car without having to worry about charging. And because it's a Tesla, well, there's superchargers everywhere. They're just as common as gas stations. And you don't have to sit there for half an hour, 45 minutes charging. You could just stop for five, 10 minutes, throw the charger on, or even at your destination, throw the charger on, in our case, like our hotel. So here's a tip I always give. Whenever staying at a hotel, find one that has EV charging on your holiday. We're charging here, everything is good. Model 3 is good. This is a dual motor long range, obviously, in a beautiful color. Everything is perfect, everything is working. There is no reason not to rent an EV on your holiday. So I often feel that people focus too much on the road trip charging and not the actual destination charging, which is actually, I think, more important than the rapid charging on, on the road. It's seldom spoke about. But yeah, no issues of range in uh, this car. And especially if you stay around the uh, Disney area in, in Celebration, Orlando, I don't think you'll be having to do that much charging because you're actually not doing that much driving. From your hotel to Disney is probably going to be maybe max 12 miles because you'll be staying in, in that area. You might even be staying at a Disney resort. So I don't think you'll be doing that much charging you could probably get away with one charge or even no charging at all. You just bring it back to the rental car place and pay the 25 or $30 and let them handle it. So yeah, I just wanted to um, mention that where, no, I don't spend all my time charging. I just really like going to chargers. First thing what I want to tell you about, this is the um, OUC recharge station. Look, look how nice it is here. Look at all the uh, chargers that are set up here. Cool, it also has, it also has the Tesla adapter in this little cabinet that's tethered. These are power, power electronics uh, chargers. I've, I've actually never used one before. So this is a site where you have to use an app to initiate the charge. There is RFID. I'm not too sure if there's an RFID card or if you could tap a credit card. We didn't try that, but it was actually quite easy to um, set up and to get, and get going a bit sketchy this site in terms of what the area looks like not many amenities around but uh, the site itself is absolutely beautiful starting up the app was easy to use you're right next to i4 so you're off and on the uh, interstate very quickly very nice um, setup here so what i've been noticing is everyone said that you can't have an ev in the united states you can't have an ev in florida and that we're cheating by using a tesla but as we proved today the CCS network is actually pretty good in, in my opinion. The Electrify America site worked perfectly. This site appears to be working perfectly. There's a few other sites. So maybe on your next vacation, don't be scared to go and rent a EV, whether it be a Tesla or a, CC, a CCS enabled car, like an Ionic 5 or a Kia EV6, something along that line. But uh, no, if you want absolute ease and peace of mind, just rent a Model 3 or, or a Model Y. They're fabulous cars to drive. We have so much fun driving them, especially on a vacation. And find a hotel that has charging, especially in this area, you're not doing that much driving. So do you really want to go to the gas station before going to the airport to go and fill up? No, absolutely not. We were at the outlets before and it was getting hot in the car. So I just turned dog mode on to cool it. It's absolutely amazing. So next trip, rent yourself an EV. You're absolutely going to love it. It will change your mind. Don't be scared about the stories you read online that there's nowhere to charge because obviously that's not the case. We've had no issues charging as I've mentioned. So 
again, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. I did forget to mention, we're filming this the next day. I did forget to mention what it costs to fill up this car like completely. Um, at a supercharger on the dual motor long range, probably about $30 to go to a complete charge, zero to 100%. I don't recommend that. Charge up to 80% and then maybe find a level two at your hotel if you have to go up to that 100% limit or whatever you have to bring the car back. And also, as I said, Hertz will charge you between $25 and $35 to fill up the car, fill up the car, uh, to, to, to charge the car when you bring it back to the airport. So again, you might want to look at that option. That's what we're actually going to do because that's pretty budget friendly actually in terms of charging and what it would take to charge this car up at the level two at the hotel. Um, one thing we also noticed was that the non-Tesla charger, so your CCS network, your Electrify America or the or that OUC site, that was about 45, 48 cents a kilowatt hour. So having a Tesla is actually much cheaper than a non-Tesla. So uh, as I keep mentioning, Hyundai Ioniq 5, EV6, those are the cars that I saw there, Mach uh, Ford, Mach E, those are the cars I saw uh, on the rental lot as well. So. You'll get about in this car probably realistically 300 miles of range from a complete charge. It will say indicated 350. It's not going to get that. I would say 280 to 300 miles is what you're realistically going to get. If you're sticking in this area, I think you'd probably have to charge it once because you're not actually driving around a lot. Uh, getting to Disney is quite easy and is quite close. If you are driving around a lot more, well, just go to a supercharger and throw it on for five or ten minutes just to bring up that state of charge so yeah i just wanted to point that out and add this little clip in after the fact because uh, i realized that yesterday that we weren't actually covering the uh, costs